All right, guys. Do you know what today is? It is 12 31 23. And you know what that means? That means it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That's right. For some reason, through all the millennium necessitated time of the universe, you were destined to be here with me. Now, do I have everything I need? No, I don't. So let's let's catch up here. Okay. So you're thinking this is one of these cliche what happened recap in 2023. Yeah. It's not. It's not cliche. Let me get that ring light out of the way. It's not cliche. Well, it's 2023 without the cliche part. It has been a really, really good year for me. Of course it has been because I'm Ken, right? Yeah, think about that. So, what are we going to do here? Well, I got those notes right above the camera, so I'm kind of looking at you. So, I'm not looking over you or past you like one of those disinterested people when you go to some political event and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and they're you know, playing that game. I'm not playing that game. Well, I kind of am, but um, this episode is going to be an ADHD. There, I finally said it. I'm looking at a mirror, by the way, not you. Um, if you're watching my channel, I would get diagnosed or, or get it done here for free. But today, we're going to be flopping and bouncing all over the map because we're going to talk about a ton of things. We're going to talk about the best guitars that have come through the shed, the worst guitars that have come to, to through the shed, not through it, the door open and closed, but we're going to talk about the artists that have guitars that come out of this shed. We're going to talk about the people who have been really important. We're going to talk about a little bit of the history of uh, what I've been doing. I think we'll start there, and then we're going to talk about what 2000... 24 looks like and I am finally going to talk to you. I've primed you about these arch top guitars, these cheap Econo arch top guitars that we are all into and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the economics of the guitar market are going to look like in 2024. We may even get a little bit of uh, down the rabbit trail if I take $100 and stick it in the bank or I take $100 and stick it into some guitar I buy and work on, what the likely outcome is going to be, especially in 2024. And if you're doing that for this reason, then you're probably going to want to stick through the end. This is going to be a long one, but you're going to be jumping all over the map and you're going to be like, dude, you're going to be exhausted by the time this is over. I'm just going to be getting started. Anyway, people ask me, how long have you been doing this? And I will say, about five years. Well, it's not been about five years because I started doing some background. Um, it's been 10 years. Now, those viewers that watch have been sticking with me since day one. This was my first guitar. This is a pitiful, pitiful guitar. It's back in the old days when I had the sin side. So you had your cigarettes, you had all your alcohol, you had all those things that would stop you from being me. <laughs> anyway, this has C6 Steve's signature on it. He's actually played it. And you know that I built this first guitar to give Tammy a way to express herself. So... This is about 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago. So on, here's what I do know. I built Punkin. Now there's two Punkins. One of them you're going to see in a couple minutes because it's uh, one of the last projects on the bench. I'm going to do that this year too. But this is Punkin, the three string cigar box guitar. It's a Camacho box. It's got a North Mississippi All-Stars poster on the back that looks like a punk, and it's got this whimsical piece of sheet metal that I cut out and a lot of matchbooks about Halloween and your mother-in-law on a broom. So, 
I looked back in my history and found that I was referencing this in February of 2024. So it had been built already. I know that on January 30th, 2014, I saw the North Mississippi All-Stars at the Hollywood Forever Masonic Lodge down in Hollywood, and I had built a guitar out of a yellow Camacho box that was radioactive themed because there was a poster on the back of it, a North Mississippi All-Stars poster that had a kid sitting in a wheat field with a piece of wheat sticking out of his teeth, and there was a nuclear bomb going off in the background. That guitar left Hollywood that night with Luther Dickinson. It is floating around North Mississippi somewhere. It's really easy to spot. If you know where it is, let me know. But that night, I got this from Luther Dickinson, Hambone Meditations, Hambone Meditations, and Luther signed it and wrote, Thanks for the Radiation. This is a great album, by the way. You'll want to get this one. So, since then, I um, built more and more cigar, cigar box guitars, and then at some point, I started building coffee can guitars and license plate guitars, and I've had um, good fortune to send those out with artists. So a lot of my guitars, especially the early ones, went out as novelties to artists. And at some point, I decided, you know what? This cigar box guitar business is like becoming rampant, almost like comparable to the mandolin orchestras um, that were around at the turn of the 20th century. So 1900 through the teens, um, Gibson was selling mandolins to uh, and giving them to music teachers. And the next thing you know, the whole town is kind of like these trends of those clackers when we were kids or Dunkin' Yo-Yos. Do I have one? You know I do. Anyway, all these novelty kicks are going on. So the cigar box guitar market has... Um, hung in there everybody's making them in fact i went to a cemetery the other day it wasn't the same one i saw luther dickinson at in 2014 but i went to a cemetery and i couldn't see anybody but i could hear people building cigar box guitars under the ground so listen guys my first tip to you is if you think you're going to get in the cigar box guitar market and make a fortune yeah guess what I knew that a long time ago. So, fast forward. About six years ago, I uh, made a YouTube video about a guitar. Um, it was King-themed. It was a Camacho 60x6 box, and it went out to New York City. And I made a video on YouTube about that. So that was six years ago. This channel has been up on YouTube for six years. Let's talk about that a little bit. If you are going to get into the trend of making your own um, YouTube channel and thinking that it's going to take you somewhere really quick. It has taken me six years to get over 5,000 viewers that watch what I do. Now, since um, the cigar box guitars and the coffee can guitars and the license plate guitars, which, by the way, I have a ton of stuff to make those around here. I'm looking at it. I can retire and do this all day long. I've built up a stock of materials, but this is a very focused, um, limited interest market. So if you're going to get into social media and think, okay, I'm going to like you. You give me two likes. I give you one like. And I've got all these followers, but nobody's watching your stuff. I'm fairly confident that, especially since I moved into arch top guitars, uh, most of my demographic is my age, a little bit younger, older. And we're those kids that looked at the Sears catalog and we couldn't get a silver tone, a K, a, a airline, any harmony guitar. Because back then, even though they're they said they were $19 or $49 or $79. That's the equivalent of several hundred dollars 
today. So there's a group of us out there that instead of getting screwed up all day and using dope and um, having a beer can dangling from the end of our arm all day, by the way, I want to tell you something. You know, um, especially this time of year, I'm going to waste some time while I'm trying to remember how to work my phone, but I live north of Los Angeles. I work down in the city and I discovered that um, Los Angeles County has like an Uber system for drunk drivers and the people they kill. It's called, yeah, the coroner's van. Remember that when you're out getting loaded. There is life beyond a bottle and one of those cigarettes or whatever it is you're doing. So I appreciate the audience I have. Um, we're all focused on kind of the same thing, and that's to get out there and do something productive. Now, looking into the new year, I'm going to get this out of the way first. Going into 2024, if you can do anything for me, go get a guitar, stay out of trouble, fix it up, and give it to a kid or an elderly person. Just hand it to them. Think about somebody that's trying to make music that you know to be talented because musicians, I know enough musicians to know that making money in the mu music business, playing the blues, especially roots music, it is a very difficult life. So get a guitar, pay attention to what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about the money. Just give somebody a guitar in 2024. Take a picture of it before where is it? Hang on. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. You know what's coming. Go out, get a guitar, take a picture before you start working on it, and then take a picture after, okay? Do that for me. So, where am I? Real, real quick recap here. I've been at this for about 10 years. The channel you're watching has been up for um, six years. We've got about 5,500 uh, subscribers. There's people that watch what I do in and out. I've got a great um, subscriber base. Um, this is supposed to be funny, amusing, but give you a lot of tips. I don't do this for money and I will tell you this if you're working on these old guitars you will learn some skills um, by messing up cheap guitars that are falling apart that you may be able to use uh, on better guitars and we're going to see a few of those in this episode so what do we got here you know what Let's start off with the best guitars of 2023 and the worst guitars of 2023. Now, I don't want to make this into some phony award show, but somebody got me this, and it's apropos, and I like to share. I'm a sharing person, so when somebody gives me a trophy that says, I'm the greatest at everything, hey, I need to share at wealth. Okay, so let's start off with the best guitars that have been through my shop in 2023. Okay, in the category of, doesn't that suck? Anyway, everybody else is doing it, right? Yeah, if you believe that, uh, I've got an, a bridge and a cliff I want to tell you about. So, category of best guitars to come through the shed in 2023. Well, one of them you can't see because it's gone. And I'll tell you a little story. So, I have, I'm not going to give you the, the links up, uh, up there because the editing is, is too bad. But just listen to what I'm telling you. I have a playlist called too good to junk pile. So I will get these guitars that come in and I'm not going to put matchbooks on the neck and all that kind of stuff and, and, and cut up the headstock and, and whatever. They're just like, okay, just leave this one alone, 
fix it up a little bit using the Lutheranism the skills that I've gained over the past 10 years of stumbling and bumbling. But this story started off with, I ran across a D'Angelico, not one from the 40s or 50s or the 30s, but this was a remake uh, put out in 2016. I saw it advertised, the price was reasonable where it started. Yeah, somebody's gonna get a muffler, I swear. I say that every year at this time. Anyway, so, I go see this guitar. Have you ever seen a D'Angelico with a Florentine cutaway like an ES-175 Gibson? What kind of guitar does Ted Nugent play? It looks like an ES-175. Well, it's actually a Birdland, which is a thinner model of the ES-175. And we're going to talk about feedback when we're talking about guitars and where I'm going in 2024. Anyway, back off to where I was. I ran across a 2016 Excel uh, D'Angelico with a Florentine cutaway. They never came out of the factory that way. I called. The story was somebody in San Diego, and you can see this in the episode called The Case of the Flor Phony Florentine. Anyway, I did a couple episodes, researched it, and then that went to trading off and I ended up with a 1954 Gretsch Electromatic that had a broken um, trapeze tailpiece. I got one, I fixed it up, I did a few little tiny things to it and that went off to someone, but I got the Gretsch done and I started putting it out. There are two guitars that I want that I put away, you know I don't play, but I put them away. I want some beat up old Steel Body National from the 1930s and I want a Gibson arch top. So, I start calling around. I go see somebody I know. I said, hey, I'm willing to take this guitar in this case and that being the Gretsch and trade it off for a Gibson arch top with F holes. So the person looks at me and they said, you like F holes? I said, yeah, who doesn't? Regular guys, R-E-G-L-A. Anyway, he comes out, he hands me a guitar. I can see the back of it, I can see it's rounded, but there are no F holes. It has an oval hole, no F holes, and it is a Gibson. And here it is. We're going to be working on this one in 2024. This is a 1918 Gibson L4 arch top. It's got a few issues. It's got a big crack in the heel. That crack runs kind of diagonally down both sides of the guitar. It's got a couple of cracks. It's got an offset here, but this by far is the best guitar that's come through the shed this year. So, award for best guitar through the shed is the 1918 Gibson L4. Won't you agree? You better. All right, moving right along, when it comes to the worst guitar to come through the shed in 2023, we actually have a couple to think about. There's a guy in Northern California called Sean Mann, and I hashtag things, and so if you punch into a search, hashtag Sean, M-A-N-N, dude, Sean Mann, dude, hashtag Sean Mann, dude. This guy sends me the worst crap I have ever seen. It comes in pieces. The back is split up. It's broken up. Uh, neck off. Everything. It's the worst you could possibly send me. And what he does is he sends it to me at a price that I just can't sleep. So he takes advantage of me mentally. 
He enjoys watching me be tortured. And I will literally do 10 episodes and pump all kinds of money into a guitar that most of you would laugh uh, and walk down the gravel <laughs> driveway of a yard sale just to get away from the guitar. No, I take them. I've taken several. And the first that comes in consideration is, um, what do we call it? The Galliano Junk Pile. There is a playlist, a start to finish. Now, I'd like to show you that one, but it's gone. And you're going to see it in a little bit here, you know, three days from now when I'm still filming this. But anyway, hang in there. I appreciate you hanging in there. This is for you. I already know all this stuff, right? This is not for me. This is for you. I am Ken. I already know, okay? So, let's move on to the next candidate. A close second, but one I can show you. I seem to be getting into these guitars that have tone bar so they run the top of the guitar the neck these bars run down the, each side and what they do is they collapse so people see these they see it wavy on the top they see cracks and they don't figure out the tone bars are giving up the ghost so I have to go in and do all kinds of reconstruction and build things like that overpass looking thing see that right there meat Punkin, y'all know Punkin. I'm still working on Punkin. In fact, we're going to talk. Ooh, that is shiny. That's a French polish finish. I'm going to show you a little bit in a clip about this guitar and what it looked like when we started. Let's do that right now. Meet Punkin. Now, wasn't that lovely? Anyway, this one. You're going to see it on the bench here in a minute because we're putting it back together. That back that was all tore up from the floor up. Remember, somebody took the finish off of this and let it dry out. That's the worst thing you can do. Really think about things when you're buying a cheap arch top. If you can feel, take your finger and feel in here and feel that there's pieces of wood running here. And you look at the top and it's wavy. And you look at the neck and it's lost its angle, but it doesn't seem to be cutting loose right here. The tone bars are giving up the ghost. The top is sinking. And when you put heavy strings on one of these things, it is going to collapse now. Let's crown this one because I guess the winner has to be present to actually win the worst guitar that has gone through the shed in 2023. Don't worry, I have a great candidate for 2024-2024. It is a Rex guitar, and it is a wreck. Trust me. Now, I have a very special category called the best and worst guitar that has come through. The best, worst guitar that has come through the shed in 2023. Don't get confused with the best one because that was the Gibson. This is the best worst. You with me? Okay, I need to recombobulate my thought process here and let me go grab this guitar. Okay, surprise. There is a story about this guitar. So, I am one of these delusionary people that will see something or think something and go, that is going to happen. There have been times in my life where everyone would just go, how did you do that? And I would just think, I just decided I was going to do it. And I was too naive to realize, number one, I did not have the skill set, that the planets would have to line up perfectly. Everything would have to be just an impossible set of coincidences would come together. This happens to me routinely in my life. I think I, I think I learned, uh, what do you call it, durability, sticking with something. The word escapes me. Because when you're young and you go through some kind of trauma where you realize nobody's going to watch out for you, somebody takes the essence of you when you're a year old and just uses it, makes money off it, and you get nothing, yeah, you become determined. So... 
I don't know how I ran across it. I think it was something about a Long Beach Folk Festival or something. I was just getting into this twangy music. I used to be, um, it was either Tchaikovsky or Metallica one. Anyway, I hear about this band. They're called Restaurant. Can you spell the word restaurant? Very few people can, unless you're in the restaurant business and you probably don't want to be there. Yeah, I'm reaching for things. Anyway, it's R-E-S-T-V-R-A-N-T, -E Restaurant. It's a trash blues band. Um, the guitarists come out of Victoria, Texas, cultural capital world, and ended up out here. And anyway, I heard this music, and I'm like, what is this? I love it. Anyway, restaurant. You know restaurant. If you know my channel, you know restaurant. Anyway, I see this video. This guy is playing this guitar, and it is tore up from the floor up. And this, when I saw the video, I swear it was probably eight years ago. But the video came from 2008. So this guitar... I loved what I was hearing. The guy is doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The music just is like awesome to me. And I thought, I'm going to have that guitar. I'm not talking about that kind of guitar or one like it. I thought, I am going to have that guitar, that very guitar. So, as I do with other artists, I hunt them down. I find a way to intrude into their life by giving them a guitar that's not worth $10 and guilting them into taking it because the guitar is built around them, which is borderline trolling, stalking, uh, whatever. Anyway, after a while, they realize he's not dangerous. I don't have to pay him. He doesn't really want anything except the guitar that built my career. So, fast forward, I did some work on some art tops, built a coffee can, guitar, did some other things, and the day came where the artist said, you know what, I'm going to retire this guitar, here you go. And I was like, I knew this was happening. I knew this was happening. It's time for, thank you, Jesus, this is really happening. This is definitely a double Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, I get the guitar. I traded off some work and the 1933 Archcraft. There's a playlist about that guitar. It had a hole in the back. I fixed it all up anyway. So the guy got the 1933 Archcraft. I got the guitar from the video that very... So what do you know? Troy... I've got a new term. It's kind of a takeoff on destroy. I call it Detroy because Troy will beat up a guitar so badly that Ace Hardware becomes the parts warehouse to fix these guitars. So I had the guitar. The guitar went back. I was devastated. But yeah, now in 2023, here it is. The number 12 junk pile in all of its decrepit glory. That is a piece of diamond plate. This is a model 6533 made between 1961 and 1965. The headstock was broken off. God only knows how. I put the Eli Green Hoodoo Voodoo bead yeah, the big, the big winch line bass string on this thing could not, these Gibson or Cluson or Grove or whatever yard sale tuners are on here, couldn't handle it. Look at those fret markers. Look at, look at how that neck is on there. Yeah, who needs to do a neck reset when you got that, right? If you look in the video, I am going to give you a link because you have to see this up there. The video I'm talking about that made me covet this. There's a piece of masonry string and duct tape strap that were on that video on this guitar in 2008. It model 65, 
35, yeah. The F hole here, you can't see it because Troy tapes up the F holes because these things feed back so terribly. That model does not have a full F hole. It's, it's incomplete. You can tell that model. But anyway, it's got the original pancake pickups. Who needs a three-way switch? Just what? Just make that. It works, but who needs it? It's got the original everything. Little reinforcement. This guitar, by far, is the best, worst guitar I have ever seen. And yes, I own it now. And um, this is a national treasure. You can see, can you see? I'm very emotional about this. Moment of silence. Let's move on. Okay. I really like this part because this is where we talk about the real trophy winners, the artists who get my guitars and actually will play them. Yeah, that's a miracle. So, I touched on this in the beginning, but I'm going to be very blunt with you now, just like somebody was blunt with me. Somebody said, hey, remember me telling you about a Rex? Yeah, this one's a rack. <laughs> Cracks. Yeah, it's got a tone bar. Of course it does. That's why I'm working on it, right? Everything is tore up on this thing. Neck's out of place. Top, back, this is all pivoting. What a lovely pit guard, right? Yeah, this is 1940. Anyway, someone said to me, Ken, why are you taking guitars that weren't that great to begin with, have been around for 50, 60, 70, 80, sometimes even 90 years in the case of the Archcraft junk pile and thinking that you can fix them up to be durable enough to send them out with some trash blues artists and think that it's all going to work out. Why don't you think about getting a body and doing your art on the body? Well, it works with tattoos, right? We won't talk about that. Anyway, I've got a respectable day job. Anyway, so I thought about that. So my guitars have taken two paths, one where I just refuse to listen and the other one where I took the advice and sent out a few of those. But, but let's start off with the guitar I claimed was probably the worst one I'd ever seen was the Galliano Junk Pile. Now, I got that one done, did a big set of episodes. Um, go through my, my playlist and you'll find it. It was the worst. I got it from Sean Mann. And um, so I get it done. And about the time it's done, I decide that there's somebody I'm going to track down because I love their music. I heard it and thought, this is 1930s music. Uh, the crackling on the first... Uh, time I heard this music it said it's a 78 this is um, of a 78 from I don't know 28 up to 35 this is Sun House uh, Reuben Lacey uh, Furry Lewis early stuff and was I in for a surprise because the recording I'd heard was actually done just a couple of years ago on period correct uh, recording equipment and the person who I'm talking about is named Nat Myers, N-A-T-M-Y-E-R-S. And I tracked Nat down. This album is fairly new. It's called Yellow Peril. Thanks for signing this. I got to take the Galliano junk pile, flip it around to be left-handed as much as possible, 
found Nat at a gig. He played it. I spent the next day out interviewing him. Um, you'll see all that stuff on my channel. There's way too many references here for me to give you eye cards to all of those. But anyway, find it. Nat Myers. Let's take a look at one of the junky old, junkiest guitar I'd probably ever worked on in the hands of Nat Myers. <laughs> or something like that. I won't get into all those details. I'm not going to give up my secrets. The guitar, I just handed it to him, gave it to him, couldn't go on the plane. Um, so it got shipped out there. He's got it now. But I mean, that is what I live for. Remember, I don't play and have somebody be able to just pick that up. No prima donna here. You're one of these guys that's got to like play, you know, <laughs> a $20,000 guitar. He just picked it up and did what he did. And that is the most awesome thing I can experience in what it is I do. So thank you, Nat. You need to find out who he is and get this music. If you like this channel, you will love this music. So moving along now. Remember the part about you need to start off with something dependable. Let's move into that now. I like arch tops. I like single cutaway arch tops. I like, um, I just like arch tops and I like the thick, old, heavy bodied arch tops, kind of jazz guitars. And so, I started getting a couple kits and three of those kit guitars went out this year and here is the first one you've seen it before you know it to be Bob the junk pile arch top and whenever the artist comes through he picks it up he's got guitars stashed all over the world because he tours all over yeah, we're talking about Bob Log the Third. By the way, this just came out on vinyl. You want to get this one? It is a. It's called Live Surprise Bob Log the Third. Anyway, I got a kit, and I put this together, and it's themed for Bob the Matchbooks, the Arizona license plate, everything. This is. Bob Log the Third. Now, 
we are going to talk about these kits and kind of like the lesson that Troy taught us about F holes and thick bodies and all of that a little bit later in the show when we're talking about what's going to happen in 2024. But let's take a look at Bob introducing this guitar at a gig. This one's hanging around for him to zip back through LA and pick it up and go do um, a West Coast, Midwest, Canada show with it. We're going to talk a little bit about why that can be difficult, but let's go listen to what Bob can do with Bob the Junk Pile Arch Top. <laughs> okay, look. Um, I'm going to play a very special song on a very special guitar, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this is dedicated to the one and only Tammy, ladies and gentlemen. This guitar is made by her papa. And I'm going to see what happens here. since Cigar Box Guitar Days and now this and trophy winner for Bob. Another kit just like this one went off to another supporter of the channel, Cody Harrell. Cody has several of my license plate guitars. We work together on a Fred McDowell themed um, six string license plate guitar. He has some of my cigar box guitars. And finally we were able to get one of my kit guitars in Cody's hands. You know it as the 61 junk pile. Cody flew actually flew up to California and I ran into him. I think I hijacked him from a wedding practice or something and took him to a, a location up up at the mountains up there but let's take a look at cody playing another one of these uh concoctions that came out of my shed this year <laughs> Thank you. 
That'll do. Yeah. I don't think I gotta do anything to it for now. Mississippi Hill Country Blues, you are going to want to keep your eye open for Cody. He spends a lot of time around the Dickinson Brothers and that group of people out there in North Mississippi. He's wonderful on just about anything you can give him to play. He can, I swear, I'm going to build him a rock with a stick on it and put a pickup on it. Um, thank you, Cody. You have helped me out immensely with any number of guitars that I have uh, sent your way and you've picked them up and played them. So, oh, finally, I have sent a few guitars overseas. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means in the outlook for 2024 and where I'm going with the guitars I'm building. And there's some economics there that are really important, but I have sent a couple guitars off to Europe and one of the kit guitars went over there and we know it to be the Bonneville junk pile. Here you're going to see it in the hands of the person it was made for and that's Andy out of the Bonnevilles. You need to know who they are if you like trash Delta blues music. Here's a minute with Andy. I've been writing constantly on it. This is our new album. Uh, which will be due at uh, summer 24, maybe later, maybe a little later. Um, so much of it has been written on this instrument since you sent it. It's just got groove, it's got soul. Um, I don't know if it's the little mojo moments that you've embedded into the instrument, or if it's you and Tommy, your soul, your energy is in the instrument. Tommy's signature on the back here. Uh, I don't know why or what it is, but it's got so much of whatever I need. I love it. much. Uh, I enjoy your music. Everybody on this, that watches this channel is going to love it too. Uh, there's going to be links below to these artists, by the way, so support them. They support me, and half the time I am working on old guitars so I can hone my skills to build guitars that are good enough to get on a stage and maybe even onto a record album. I've had that happen a couple of times, so uh, I've been fortunate there. So artists, Thank you very much for actually putting my guitars on stage and playing them. That is what I do this for. Okay, let's get down into some people I need to say thank you to in 2023. Here's your trophy.
Let's start off with Fred Wallachy. Fred is up in Malibu. Fred is a wonderful human being. Fred has been through any number of successes, the greatest successes and some of the worst challenges somebody could go through. And I'll tell you what, I have gone from pasting a bunch of yard sale stuff on a box and, and into what I'm doing now. I would say that here is the biggest thing that's happened to me uh, in the 10 years I've been at this. And, and this will put it into perspective for you. If the action on your guitar is this high, somebody's going to pull it out um, if you're fortunate because everybody's given these guys these guitars anymore. And they're going to put a slide on and they're going to play it and everybody's going to say, man, that is a junky piece of crap and you can really play that thing and then they're going to hang it up and after a while when it breaks down it's going to end up i don't know where they end up where all the bad cigar box guitars go anyway fred i hunted fred down fred has been instrumental in helping me number one make my instruments functional in terms of action tuning that kind of thing and has given me a bunch of his time to teach me how to do repairs on old stuff. The stuff that you're seeing me do, I have a mind that kind of goes to structure. I'm an arborist. I have talked in my professional career about how trees do in wind. I'm known for that kind of thing. I mean, if you're an arborist, people don't want to know if their tree has a manganese deficiency. They want to know if it's going to stand up and it's going to be safe. So. Uh, that was my crane experience and stuff. I, I did an episode called Rig Up Trucks and Cranes and Guitars and whatever. That's kind of a theoretical thing if you want to hunt that one down. But Fred has been instrumental in helping me uh, become better. Someone that claims that they're a luthier that does what I do in the shed is an idiot. Um, Luthiers in the old days worked on violins and cellos and things like that. Fred's family was involved in that for many generations. Anyway, I go up and see Fred. I just got to see him the other day, and there's always something amazing happening at Fred's shop. So let's see what I saw there the other day. Hey, Fred, you, you, Fred, you are the trophy winner in my world. Hey, Fred. Don't run off here. Larry, would you pop this case open? Absolutely. We've got here an original late teens era the Gibson harp guitar. Six strings on the guitar neck, ten strings on the harp side. Beautiful detail. It was the high-end model of the harp guitars. Beautiful Rosetta, single bridge. Got all the original parts to it. When Fred bought it, we got a hold of it. It had a, this was back in the early 90s that we got this. The seam had already come open. So it has sat for actually ever since the early 90s. Uh, and now it's time to try to do a repair job on this thing. Perfect. Now, there's a couple more people I want to tell you about. Um, one of them is Richard Vanderwick, Richie, Southside Richie. He's an old skateboarder type, thrasher, that type of thing. But he runs around Ventura in an old pickup truck. And there's a lot of people that play music out of the back of Richie's pickup truck. Richie is always great when I have a guitar to say, hey, Richie, who can you hook me up with? That can give my guitar a spin so I can tell whether it works or not. Richie, trophy to you, Padna. <laughs>
Frank. I don't know how many of my guitars I have taken to Frank, sometimes two or three at a time. He'll be in a live show and I'll be handing them to him. And he's another one that can just play anything. Very accomplished. Um, came over from France in the 80s was in the uh, Bay Area blues scene, and now he's all over. He's in Europe, he plays uh, festivals everywhere, comes back here, I get to see him locally. Uh, he's great with Tammy. Um, he has played any number of my guitars, so thank you, Frank. RJ grew up very close to where I did um, and you know I have never I hate to admit this shoot me now I have never really liked harmonica music for some reason it's just kind of and mandolins too it's just kind of but you know if Richie Skaggs is playing it Ricky Skaggs you know got them Highway 40 Blues, then it's a different story. But when it comes to harmonica, if R.J. Mishu is playing harmonica, got to love it. And R.J. has helped me out. He plays a little guitar, too. I'm going to give you a little clip of him doing that. Good to see you. Um, another hard working person. It's not easy to make money in the blues business, much less keep it alive so younger generations can know what it is. So thanks again, RJ. Okay, let's talk about vendors who deserve one of these. Um, um, when it comes to a guitar shop, you cannot beat Guitar 48. You cannot beat Rob at Guitar 48. Um, he's a luthier. He's a full service shop. He'll set up guitars. He does repairs. He will take in trades on stuff. So let's say you buy a guitar. Um, he's going to put you in something that's, that will match your skill set and give you some room to grow into. He does, doesn't sell you some scrappy guitar that you give up on. Uh, but when it comes time for you to need a better guitar, you can always trade stuff in. And he is a constant source of good stuff for me to work on. Rob, you're the best. Let's take a look at a clip from Rob this year. This is beautiful, man. Aria, doesn't have a mark on it, man. Look at that. Those cool old tuners. Maple neck, made in Japan. Yeah. Let's hear height adjustment, intonation back and forth. Very cool. I mean, it's working. It's beautiful. I don't know what you're going to do with this, though. Um, you're going to have to put this away and sell it as is, you know, you can't really. All right, that's Rob. Rob is a constant source of um, equipment for me, and I am also able to go in and catch some tips and how to fix things, especially about setups and things. And I ended the year with... Trading Rob, I did an episode um, called Easy Come, Easy Go and took some acoustic flat tops and ended up taking them to Rob and Rob um, worked out a trade for this Aria from the 70s and um, yeah, this one will go down the road somewhere in a trade, but Thanks, Rob. Thanks for everything you do. 
uh, for me and my channel. If you are in Southern California, make a trip up to Ventura, see what Rob's got. He's got something for everybody regardless of what your skill set is. When it comes to the kits, guitar kit world, thank you. Um, the guitar kit world sells a lot of instruments to a lot of different people. Uh, they give people an ability to try out uh, their skills. Simple. They have simple kits. They have advanced kits. But guitar kit world has always been there. And you'll see me, if you go to one of their, their advertisements, you'll see my face up there and stuff. So, Guitar Kit World, um, thank you for everything you have done for me and for the work we'll be doing in the future, because I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I want to give a shout out to Beverly Hills Living. It's a magazine that comes out straight out of Beverly Hills, 90210, and in their April edition of 2023, they did a little section about me, my day work, what my professional career as an arborist is, and then they went into this side of my world, which is my guitars. Thank you very much. Uh, for letting my secret out, Beverly Hills Living. I appreciate your support of the city I work for and the interests of people like me and sharing information about what it is we do as individuals. I love this. Thank you. All right, back to the guitar that Rob... Um, supplied me with at the very end of the year. This is the last one I took in in bartering and trading stuff off. I want you to notice the thickness of this one versus the best worst guitar ever. Now, I want to talk first a little bit about what I am going to be focusing on in 2024. First, I think I'm going to get back into um, some practical stuff, whether it's with the coffee cans or the license plates, and kind of do a uh, loop back around and do a couple episodes about that for the people who are interested in like the roots instruments. That means you don't have the money to go into a guitar shop and you make instruments out of what you've got. Um, there's a few artists that support the channel that will play those instruments, kind of show you after I build them what they will do. Um, when it comes to these junky arch tops, you can expect me to work through my inventory of those. I plan on at some point doing a showing of the guitars where I actually set up any number of them and people will come along and um, buy them. That will probably be in uh, conjunction with some local art show or blues festival where you'll be able to see me there, talk to me uh, and possibly purchase something I've made starting off from a coffee can, license plate, uh, arch top, or even a kit guitar. So I think that's on the horizon at some point. I think that you're going to see me going to thinner body guitars when it comes to the kits I make and crank those out because let's talk a little bit about the economics of guitars going into 2024. If you are a builder, I don't care what you're building, remember if you're doing cigar box guitars there's a lot a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of competition. If you know something about guitars already, you know about action, setting them up, intonation, quality parts, those kinds of things, that's going to be a plus for you. If you're just getting started, there are all kinds of vendors. I want to tell you about somebody that deserves a trophy, and that is Darren Dukes. When I started this 10 years ago, Darren Dukes was there for me. He would sell me a neck. He would sell me a pickup. He would sell me what I needed. He would give me information I needed to get better. 
Um, find somebody like that. They're really, really hard to find. Darren Dukes wouldn't be where I am today without you, sir. Thank you very much. But think about what you're getting into. Think about what your aspirations are. If you are going to sell um, cigar box guitars, have a market. There's, like I said, I can't tell you how much competition there is. Um, I've challenged you earlier to make something and give it to somebody and see what they do with it. Don't give to get. That's not going to work out for you. There's a lot of people out there doing that. If someone thinks somebody gave me this and it works and I can use my skill set to display theirs, that's a win-win for everybody. But let's talk a little bit about what I've learned about these arch tops. Again, Fred Wallach, he told me, you're starting off with guitars that weren't that good in the beginning. You're beefing them up. They're not really that dependable. Find something dependable. Now, when it comes to shipping full body arch tops, it is expensive. I've taught you how to buy um, television, big screen television boxes and tilt the guitar in sideways so you don't exceed uh, the height and, and uh, package uh, dimension criteria that's going to put you up into shipping uh, costs that are 600 1400 I had somebody say, I can get it there for $1,700. No, that's that's not what we're doing. We're not shipping Tutankhamun relics from one museum to the other. So know what the shipping is going to cost. Um, I am thinking about getting into some smaller um, parlor-sized guitars that will have pickups on them that will work for the crowd that I like to supply instruments to. Um, one really big problem for me is these full body arch tops that I build. They have horrendous feedback. If you're in some little juke joint or some beer joint or, or you're playing some outdoor festival, you've got a little um, amp there and you can control those kinds of things. They're okay, but you have to pay attention to how you're sitting, what the cord is doing, how things are grounded. I've got all that down, but they feedback terribly. So if I start getting into stuff that's thinner, you'll know why. Um, um, I am not going to get into a world where I am getting 335 knockoff clone kits and doing Starburst. There is a zillion people out there doing that. There are factories in China that are cranking those types of instruments out. You'll hear some people say, like George Gruen, G-R-U-H-N, find out who he is. He has a podcast uh, or a Zoom uh, platform show every couple of weeks. He'll tell you about um, that some guitar makers are making the best guitars they've ever made in terms of just basic quality out of the factory right now. Um, and so you're going to see me probably go into a thinner body. Uh, the style of things I, I do isn't going to change. I'm not looking to mass market these things and get everybody and their mother to buy one. Either you have one or you don't. And the people that see my guitars, uh, they'll see something in the background when I'm doing my, my shows and you can see my inventory. If something strikes, you get a hold of me. We'll make something happen for you. That's how I do this. I've got a great day job and I am not desperate to sell uh, a guitars or push them on anyone. Now, I don't think we've ever had this conversation before or one like it, but let's be serious now. All joking aside, um, COVID was bad for music. You know that. Um, I have heard horror stories about people selling off their favorite instruments just because there were no gigs, um, there wasn't anything going on. Um, people were making money doing um, Zoom um, sessions, uh, playing music out of their house, um, depending on the kindness of uh, their fans to kick something in through PayPal or something like that. So music and music venues were just knocked out of action as a result of COVID. Now, all of a sudden, 
everything comes back, things are starting to pop again, and people start wanting to play music. And what happened was, I don't want to get into names here, um, I kind of avoid that. Again, when it comes to me building my instruments, I'm not interested and I don't support people to buy body styles and do everything they can to make everyone believe that they are a guitar that is a big name maker guitar, that it has a quality of the guitar. My guitars are my guitars and it's pretty easy to see if everything doesn't crash to the floor that this is not a brand new top of the line guitar. Okay, so here's what I have to tell you. Um, there are dealers of guitars that have contracts with big name guitar makers. And so the idea is we will, the, the, the manufacturer will tell the dealer, I will give you this guitar for you to sell for this much. And ideally what happens is they sell the guitar and the profit is returned into more guitars from the same manufacturer. And this thing is going on and on. And at some point you pull uh, out for the funds to take care of what your shop costs to run and your help and your bench guys and all that kind of stuff. But what happened was nobody shut down the big numbers that were being cranked out in manufacturing. Nobody stopped and said, hey, wait a minute here. Are we selling all these guitars? And guess what? Somebody's parked out in front of my house with a motorcycle. That's great while I'm filming. That's the joy of living in nonstop action act in California. But at the end of the day, the market is flooded with new guitars. And so some of the guitar manufacturers started going right to the fans right to the direct buyer instead of ha helping the guitar shops stay in business it's like oh no you can buy i remember the first time i rode a motorcycle anyway they would go they're going directly to the people buying the guitars and bypassing the shops so the shops that i support I don't like to see that happen. Those guys are there for me with tactical advice. Um, and so what does this all have to do with arch tops and the kinds of things we're working with? Well, guess what? When you can buy a brand new guitar directly from the manufacturer for less than you can at the shop, the used guitar market goes out the window. Why would you buy a used guitar that the shop put into the inventory two years ago when the manufacturer is offering a 20% direct buy uh, alternative. So there's a lot of brand new guitars out there hanging on the shelf and some of these manufacturers have not shut down yet. Now, so let's say that if you're a buyer right now and you're looking for a brand new guitar yeah the ball's in your court um and sometimes it's very difficult to decide i'm going to spend the extra 20 percent to keep the the shop in business so this all meters down and filters down into the used guitar market now if everybody can buy a new guitar, why do they want an old guitar? The only safe place is the golden age guitar. So you're talking about the 30s model arch tops, 40s. Uh, if you're talking about um, electric guitars, uh, solid body guitars, you're talking about 50s and 60s guitars, but you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars typically. What does this all mean to us when we're doing this kind of thing? As I've always told you, these guitars were nothing to jump up and down about when they were new. They've been laying around, they've been drying out, uh, warping, necks bad, and in order to do the kind of work, turnaround on stuff like this, even if you paid $80 for this guitar or 100 
you're going to have a lot of hours into it. Track it. Make sure that if your intent is to make money doing it, that you've got a product you can work with. Now, if I were to say, if I bought, say, a mid-level, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred dollar um, K guitar that was in really good shape, I wouldn't do anything to it. I wouldn't take the finish off. I wouldn't change the tuners and stuff because when you modify something out of its original condition, including binding, finish, and that, sometimes you will see people say, well, that's not what I wanted. I want an original condition. So I think that uh, old arch tops in good shape, the ones that are too good to junk pile, a good investment. We all know that if you put $100 in a checking or a savings account right now, versus you get a good guitar, uh, a vintage um, arch top at a good price, I think that especially if you're willing to sit on it for a while, you're going to see better interest or return on the guitar than you will your savings account. I, I don't think that's a surprise. So at the end of the day, use care in what you're buying. Make sure that there's money into it. Uh, the, the, the value of what you're doing is is going to be maintained in the price that you could get rid of the guitar for. Don't get in over your head on certain instruments because you're going to see the market, especially in used guitars, crash out like the new guitar market did. Remember, you can look, that nobody's telling you this, but you can look in the advertisements on social media where they say, hey, buy direct from this and you'll find out it's 20% less and the dealers are sitting here holding on to stock. They're expected to buy more and it's just a cycle, a vicious cycle of, well, it's called the economy of guitars. Okay, let's close this out. I'm going to show you a couple things I got on the bench that I'm closing out the year with. And let's do that now. We have this Gibson early mid 60s B25 model that when they came out with it, let's get everything back stable here. It had a plastic bridge. This has been a nightmare. You don't try and modify a bridge that you have or something. Someone makes this bridge a replacement that's just for this. And if you have this issue, I'll be happy if you send me an email to tell you where to source this bridge. Now, even though working on this has been kind of a nightmare, a couple good things come out of it. We made a tool that put a groove in it, set it on the 12th fret, run this up to the back of your nut and then you simply turn this around and it gives you the intonation point off the 12th fret to where the saddle slot needs to be on the new bridge that really helps you line things up because if you don't get that right it's a problem also since the bridge was pulling up on this thing and there was a couple of cracks and things and we also use this from martin I made what is the equivalent of a full body press. You can also use it to steam necks off and things like that if you pat it right, but it has cork padding on it and there's a top to it. So um, this one is finally going out the door back to the person it belongs to. I've expanded my skill set this year working on some flat top guitars. All right, in terms of junk, we are going to wrap pumpkin up. Yeah, you can't beat this one for a complete waste of effort, but we are going to finish up uh, the structure on this one. Let me get it set up here. Um, we are actually going to finish putting the T-knot and the bolt through the neck. So this will actually be removable. This is all stainless steel. Uh, we're going to put the electronics in it. And we are finally going to put, after everything is set, we're going to pull off the yardstick. And we are going to put the back back on pumpkin. 
Alrighty then, thanks for hanging in there if you're still here at the end. Um, anybody that I've shown you an album, see what you can do about getting a hold of the album. Say hi to the suppliers that I've talked about if you can. And um, I look forward to carrying this on for another year on this channel. And you're going to see uh, a return to some of the old stuff that I used to do now that I'm better able to do a higher quality product and you're going to see the guitars that are going out to artists be a little bit more useful in terms of what it costs to fly them all around on airplanes and and the, just the practicality of it you don't want to give somebody something that they can't use because they go broke trying to find uh how to get it on an airplane thanks again for supporting me all of you 5,000 some people that watch my channel, I very much appreciate it. Tell me what you want to see uh, in the coming year. Make a comment and um, Happy New Year, everybody.